For the love of God, whatever you do, do not buy a graphics card right now because Intel's about to launch some absolute beasts. Let's talk about it. Before that, if you just built or bought a new PC and you don't want to spend $200 on a Windows 11 Pro license, well, thankfully, VIP CDK Deals has just what you need, offering excellent prices on games and software, and right now, you can get a Windows 10 or 11 Pro OEM key for a great deal. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off, bringing the total to just $23 for Windows 11 and $17 for Windows 10 and you can even find great deals on products such as Office 2019. You can also check out securely with PayPal and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate your new copy of Windows, just search activate under Windows and type in your key. So if you wanna learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. Okay, so if you've been waiting for some actually good GPUs in terms of price to performance, you're not gonna wanna miss today's video because yes, Intel has just released a ton of new information about their new Arc Battle Mage GPUs, the second generation and far more powerful GPUs coming out, well, very, very soon. And as you can see, they even released a video where they stated, Happy December, it's time to be Mary, see you on December 3rd at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. But there's a lot more to go over, starting off with videocards.com, who added that not only is it going to be announced on December 3rd, but apparently on December 12th, there's going to be launch and reviews, at least for the Intel Limited Edition cards, which will likely be just a tiny bit more expensive than the board partner cards, which should actually have reviews go live on December 13th. Now, as exciting as that is, we even got an image from apparently a reviewer just straight up showing the ASRock ARC B580 Steel Legend GPU. This is the same GPU which did have some images leak just a little bit ago, and it's a pretty beefy card. Apparently, this is going to be a triple fan design, dual 8 pins, and it's just really thick as well. It seems way larger than it needs to be, which does, to me, make me question whether or not this is going to be a bit of an overclocking monster. The first generation had potential to be that, but it didn't scale real well. This thing could potentially have a lot more room left in the tank as long as they actually give it a good enough cooler. But wait, there's more. We even have information on the Intel Arc B580 and B570 specs from videocards.com once again, and I will have links to all the articles I go over today in the description below. But here we can see that the B580 is apparently gonna have 20 XE2 cores, and then the B570 is gonna have 18. The B580 has 2.8 gigahertz clock speeds and 2.6 on the B570. The other difference is 12 gigabytes on the B580 and and 10 on the B570, which does also mean 192 bit bus on the larger one, 160 on the smaller, which means you're gonna have much higher memory bandwidth on the B580, as well as a higher memory amount, and is also going to come in, they're estimating around $249. That is definitely very interesting, and this new information on the ARC B570 comes from what appears to be a leaked slide from an ASRock Challenger 10 gigabyte OC card, which was posted in their comments of all places, which is very strange. And it does also come with one HDMI 2.1 and get this three DisplayPort 2.1 with DSC, so I'm not entirely sure if that means you're gonna be getting the full 80 gigabit DisplayPort 2.1, or if they're gonna be using maybe 54 gigabit. It's hard to say as of now. However, since we do have this new information, well, my old information about the Intel Arc GPUs for Battle Mage, well, it looks like it was just a little tiny bit off, very, very close, but the XE cores have changed slightly. Apparently, now we're back to 20 XE cores. I was thinking it was going to be 24 for a moment there, but the original information that I had seen about 20 was correct. So the B580 is going to have 20 XE cores for 2,560 ALUs. Here's all of the information. We just went over a lot of it on the video cards article, so the only new bit here is going to be the 180 watt TDP, which I do expect we'll be seeing roughly around there on the limited edition GPUs. Also the B570, 
Once again, similar information, except for going up from 14 XE cores that I was expecting, and I thought they were gonna call it the B550. No, it's the B570. It's going from 14 to 18 XE cores, so a massive improvement to the overall performance, but a slight reduction in that boost clock. I was expecting 2.8. They're bringing it down to 2.6, which signals to me that this will be a 150 watt TDP. They're probably going to have certain models that won't even need an eight pin to run the card, but we'll have to see when it's officially announced. And then the final stuff that you guys probably wanna hear is the actual performance, the price, and the release date. So let's start off with the B570, around 12 teraflops on paper, puts it far behind the A770, but based on the information of well, from Red Gaming Tech, apparently the B580 coming close to, or if not matching the RTX 4060 Ti. Well, with that information, it seems like we're gonna have an IPC somewhere between, depending on the task, 30 to 50% higher on the IPC. That is crazy, which would equal, well, the B570 should be coming in around the A770 in terms of performance, but instead of being $350, well, I would expect it to come in between 180 to $200. And that means you are gonna be absolutely smashing these 60 class cards in terms of value. And that's gonna be absolutely excellent coming out on December 12th. And then the B580, well, that should be around 20% faster than the A770 as it has 14.3 teraflops on paper in theory, but the IPC again is gonna lift that way, way up. MSRP, I am expecting now around $230 for the cheapest AIB cards. And then $250 is probably what you're gonna be spending on the average price for this card. I could see maybe a few going a little bit higher for AIBs and a few going a little bit lower, plus or minus, you know, 10, $20 but the limited edition I do believe will be $250. If it's less than that, I will lose my mind because $250 would already be basically destroying every other card on the market in terms of value. And then at $230, if you can pick up a few AIBs for that, that's even better. And then I wouldn't be too surprised if that becomes the average price by the time something like a 5060 comes out, which would cement this as still the best value card by some margin, considering that not only is it gonna be far more performance, better drivers out of the box, but also it should have a significantly better ray tracing experience than what AMD is going to be offering, probably a little bit closer to NVIDIA. They now have their XESS DLSS competitor in 200 games. It's just starting to shape up in a way that, well, Intel's starting to look really, really good. Again, this one will be released on December 12th of 2024 this year, coming up very very soon and then we have the b770 now i don't think they're going to be talking about this one until ces it could be released as early as quarter one 2025 but there was also over on twitter i saw from harukaze 5719 actually tweeting some sort of an article from benchlife.info where he was suggesting that these cards might actually not come out until later in 2025 but there's a lot of discussion over whether or not this is true i have seen some people suggesting quarter one and now this article quarter four so we just don't don't know whether or not it's going to happen in quarter one or not at this point in time. I'm going to say more likely quarter one, but we just don't know. But this one, if it is getting 50% higher IPC in theory, could be over 50% faster than the ARC A770 and could be as fast or maybe even faster than an RTX 4070. And then the B780 would actually be around 74% faster in theory and would actually be faster than an RTX 4070, likely a 4070 Super in terms of performance. These two cards would actually have 16 gigabytes of VRAM and 608 to 640 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, making them very, very excellent for higher resolution gaming. And coming in with the B770, likely around $330 to $350, and the B780, $350 to potentially as high as $400. Well, these two cards are going to be absolutely destroying the RTX 4070 and 4070 Super in terms of value. More VRAM, similar performance nearly half the price and coming out hopefully in quarter one of 2025, these could essentially save the GPU market. So I'm very, very excited to see the B570 and B580 very shortly, as well as the B770 and B780 a little bit later in 2025. 
And if you are, let me know in the comments below. These are definitely my most anticipated graphics cards. I really think we need a third competitor in the GPU market. And if they turn out to actually be as good as they well are in theory on paper, well then I do think it's important that we go out on a limb and actually purchase them, assuming the drivers are good because we cannot continue to have Nvidia and AMD raising prices into oblivion and just making things completely unaffordable. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that the B770, the B780, the B570, and the B580 will really be this good? Or do you think they're gonna fall short of expectations? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.